I am standing in main crop garden number two, which is a bean trellis. That's what the dominant growing method here is, is trellising dry beans. And these are some African bean. I can't tell you what they are, but uh, they're prolific. This side, it's, uh, I think most of them are rattlesnake pole beans, but I got some sort of runner bean in here. I must have planted one forgot about it but I think that kohlrabis can grow in the shade and I've gone too far with that thinking it's too shady now and what I did was I planted these kohlrabi because they are a trap crop for slugs the slugs were just eating the beans alive when they were just little so I planted these kohlrabi in here of course you know slugs like those even better so they came over here and started eating on them and most of the time I can get a kind of a decent crop of kohlrabi even in the shade and I probably still can if I let it go long enough. But I want to try something different. I want to dig all these out of here and transplant them and see how they do. Going back in the shade, doesn't look like I had, oh there was one right here, see that, it's, that's totally dead. Well this one's even smaller, look at this one. This is the kind of experiment I want to do here, look at these guys. There's like nothing there. And the leaves, you can see there's even slugs on them yet. So, so shady in here that it never dries out. Looks like the beans really like it. There's another one, there's another one. So I'm going to dig all those out. I'm going to clip all the leaves off, dig them all out. And I'm going to transplant them, see how they do. And it's a great experiment. But I'll tell you what, these beans really like that nice moist soil down there. Man, they're growing like crazy. What they did here last year too, and the year before that. <laughs> I've been planting them year over year. I set up these trellises and I don't want to move them. So I just keep planting. I guess we'll just have to keep planting until the uh, the crop fails or slows way down. So, of course I'm adding compost every year to the mounds and that probably replaces any of those trace elements that they would otherwise use up. So I'll get back to you after I get them all to go. Alright, here's a kohlrabi. You can see, see that the roots are still locked into their little cubes they were growing in. I'm going to wash all that off too. I want just a bare root. I'm going to start from fresh. Well, it's amazing how these roots really didn't get beyond that little cube either. Just teeny bits of roots. Alright, and we'll get some water. And here they are, all washed up. You know, and some of them are got some pretty nice roots. These larger ones, they're even at a harvestable size. I mean, they would add to a meal. But I want to replant them. These are Cossack variety, and they can get to be as big as 10, 12 pounds. But I think that uh, a little late in the year now, we're mid-August, for them to grow that big. But who knows? That's why I like to experiment, see what happens. I think these larger ones, these three, I'm going to save for advantageous spots in the garden because they're already proven that they can grow somewhat even in deep shade. So now I'm going to put them in the sun, see what happens. Uh, some of these little ones I'm going to put in a pot. I've got some pots over there that I just pulled away from a shelf because the tomatoes are dead in them. So I'm going to plant some in those pots and we'll see how they grow in pots. I don't know, we'll find out what happens. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about this too a little bit. These are gill plates from fish and I am still digging them out of my garden and some of this stuff is really sharp. Look at that one. So th these, uh, this is remnants from back when I did the Three Sisters Gardens and I kind of followed the the uh, directions of how Native Americans used to bury fish in the ground and they would plant their corn seed on top of the fish and then what happens is is that fish never really decomposes not the bones and then you're you know this is years later and I dig this up and they poke at my fingers as I work the soil so I think it's a bad idea if you're going to be Bearing fish in a garden, you're going to continue to work year after year. Which brings me to my 
other theory about Native Americans when they did plant corn they never planted it again in the same spot twice you know they moved around so it was no big deal to leave fish bones in the soil how about that for a theory and an idea I think the Native, Native Americans were a lot smarter moving around like they were I'm sure the root systems on these tomatoes these are tumbler tomatoes and boy they are just prone to wilt I think it's called like fusarium wilt or something some type of a fungus or I don't know what exactly it is bacteria but the plant is virtually dead grew a lot of tomatoes I'm pretty happy about that but I want to show you this root system that was formed in my compost look at that these are all hairnet roots if you were using you know the regular standard chemical NPK fertilizer you buy in a store you know they normally call it like 10 10 10 or, or have some other um, quantities of numbers here gotta get that mosquito off me you wouldn't get all these hair nut roots you just get a couple of big tap roots because that stuff is designed to have your plants drink the NPK and then basically all the plant is is you know a skin full of water full of NPK chemical fertilizer so uh, this on the other hand this is hairnet roots they're eating and they're absorbing all the nutrients on the scale the periodic table which there's a lots and lots of elements so basically I'm growing some really healthy food here that's what this is telling you same with the other one all right, I'm going to plant some kohlrabi in these pots now and see how they grow. So here we are with the kohlrabi in the pots. We're headed to tomatoes. You can see I kind of angle bevel the side here with the soil because when you water the pot, if it was a flat surface, the water likes to find a little channel along the side of the pot and then you really don't water the soil in the center. So now when I water it, the water will go to the center where the kohlrabi is. So this is when I put two of them in there. And you know, you, you in your in my mind, I think you know they're gonna get these are big kohlrabi's and they're gonna fight for each other in this pot. Well, I don't know if one's gonna die or not, and I don't know just how they'll get along. So let's try it once, see what happens. I got some more over here. This pot here has got a really tiny hole, and the soil is always wet. There's potatoes growing in here now. I actually had to cut some off because they plant died off so maybe there's some potatoes down there but I don't know that this one I never I hardly ever water a matter of fact I've never watered this one and it's still very moist down in here you can see how moist it is and the idea is wouldn't that be nice to have potatoes you never have to water <laughs> anyways I think it's more function of the pot here but I haven't watered this one either and this one dries out pretty much I'm growing some potatoes oh here's one right here look at it. I'll take that one and I'll eat it for breakfast tomorrow but uh, I don't know, maybe Colorado's don't like potatoes and they'll die right away. I doubt it, but who knows, right? So, just another experiment. I'll show you where the bigger ones are. So, I planted one right there, and the other one is up on the other side of that little uh, thicket of skirt and. Weeks. There's going to be radishes growing in that spot, so we're kind of on the edge. All right, we'll see what happens.